right. Good afternoon, everybody. We are going to call uh, this meeting of council to order. Good to see a nice crowd out here today. We've got a got a whole bunch of people here, council. We're going to be doing some proclamations, I think, a little later on, and uh, going to be introduced to some people that we, I believe, we actually know them all. That's what I'm going to say. We actually, we actually know them all. So. Uh, that's probably going to be good. This is the public council meeting of September 23rd, 2014. Before you, you should have a copy of the agenda. There is that I recognize one notice of motion uh, outside to be added to the agenda. I'm going to entertain a motion to accept the agenda as presented. Moved by Councillor Ledwell, seconded by Councillor Walsh. Uh, any other additions or anything on the agenda to be spoken of? If not, call the question. All in favor? Contrary minded? Uh, motion is carried. First item on the agenda, the minutes and action report for the public council meeting of September 9th. I'll entertain a motion to accept. Uh, moved by the Deputy Mayor. It is seconded by Councillor Aker. Any errors or omissions? Again, this would be from the uh, meeting of September 9th. Any errors or omissions? Going once. Hearing none, we'll call it. All in favor? Contrary minded. Motion is carried. Referring then to the minutes and the action report from September 29th, look for business arising. I'd ask that you refer to any uh, item by the agenda number that would be One attached item, uh, there too. Councillor Walsh. Yeah, item 607, and this is uh, in response to a question that was put forth, I think, by Councillor Aker in the last meeting. He was wondering about what percentage uh, Mount Pearl is drawn down from Babel's, of course, with the, the thought that St. John's would be taking water from Petty Harbor uh, right now. Uh, the fact is they're not taking water from Petty Harbor yet, but they will be in the spring of 2015. Uh, so in answer to your question, Councillor Ager, and for the information of councillors and the general public, of course our effluent, our, our, our take uh, from the water fluctuates depending on consumption. And uh, in 20, uh, 2011, actually, we were at a low of 24%, and last year, 2013, we are at 29%, and so far, and so far it means right up to September 22nd, we're about... 29% uh, this year. Uh, next year, in the spring, once we uh, start taking a larger percentage or share of the water and St. John's moves from Babel's to Petty Harbor, uh, that percentage is expected to go from 29 to 35. Um, that's really significant, though. That, that's a 6% increase, and that represents about a 20% or a little better than 20% increase in, in, uh, in consumption, consumption. costs, yeah. not in consumption. In well, consumption in both. Costs. It, well, actually, it probably more cost. Yeah. 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 Right. I'm assuming that our I'm, I'm assuming that our consumption would be well, probably relatively the same, but we'll be yeah. a larger percentage of the cost. Well, we're going yeah. to be we're going to have yeah. to take a larger percentage of the cost. So that provides information uh, that we uh, were asked at the last public meeting. I don't have the actual numbers in terms of volume, but I think the question was more about what percentage of of water are we taking and what will we take in 2015. <laughs> So that's it. Thanks for much. That, Thank worship. you. Uh, Deputy Mayor? Yeah, Your Worship, I, uh, I think I, I posed the question, and, and Councillor Aker sort of chimed in oh, after. Sorry, oh, no problem. No problem at all. But I was more concerned with when um, Petty Harbor comes on stream, and, and you're absolutely right, because St. John's will be taking less water, obviously, from the system, so we would expect for our percentage to go up. But I was more concerned with uh, the trend in terms of what Mount Pearl residents were using. Like, has our consumption level... Not as a percentage. I, I, I appreciate the percentages that were given here today. Uh, I'm just curious, over the last, say, four or five years, have we as a city been consuming more water per liter? Like, you know, the volume of water, not necessarily. More liters per person. More liters per person. I don't know or, if that's how one measures it, but I'm Or more total is. liters. That, that's my, because um, if St. John's comes off stream, and this was the argument when I raised it years ago, and I, I threw out to the idea of water meters, and if we can somehow. Uh, track and encourage people to reduce consumption. So once St. John's comes off, I would, I, well, I would have expected that Mount Pearl's percentage of consumption would have shot up because there's, if our consumption stays the same and St. John's is using less, well, the percentage is going to increase. But I'm just wondering if we could get the, the data that show the actual consumption of Mount Pearl over the, uh, the last four or five years. We'll have a meeting this fall. Okay. Sure, just to see, because we have measures in place like uh, encouraging people to water the lawns at certain times. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to see, since we brought those measures in place, have they actually had any impact on the city's consumption? So that was the spirit of my question, but 
I do appreciate the follow-up. Uh, just an answer to that. We haven't changed the cost per liter in the last uh, several years. So I guess based on the trend from 2011, it was 24%, and we've shot up to 29% in 2013. I'm assuming that that's based almost solely on consumption. Okay. So I don't know the exact figures, but I would imagine our consumption has increased. And, of course, it's just a, a tremendous time to remind people that, you know, we need to conserve water, that, that conservation water is in effect year-round. And, of course, the less water we consume, you know, the less our cost is to, to taxpayers. It doesn't change the percentage of allocation going forward, but it will mean less consumption. So the less we use, the less we have to pay for, obviously. All right, thank you. Any other business arising? Uh, uh, okay, Deputy Mayor, you, have, then Councilor uh, Tessier. Sorry about that, Councilor Tessier. I think we both shot up at the same time there. Uh, item 612, Your Worship, on the dog park. Uh, I, um, I raised at last meeting regarding the uh, fence to the uh, small dog uh, park section there. And uh, Director Antel did send some pictures around, so I do appreciate the work uh, that was done there to fix uh, both gates, I do believe, in the area. And we did put some crushed stone in. Um, I sort of suggested uh, in response to one of the residents' concerns that the, the younger dogs or the smaller dogs are digging under the fence. Mm -hmm. So I suggested maybe if we could put a, a strip of pavement or something there that would prevent the dogs from actually digging down under, that would keep them inside. But in speaking with Director Antle, uh, that could cause more problems in the wintertime with heave and frost and the way the crushed stone tends to, to go up and down. So the approach, which I think is a very reasonable approach, uh, they put the crushed stone there, and if it does heave in the winter time, and we got the gates open in the winter, we could simply excavate some of the crushed stone, mm -hmm. and that would ease the movement. So we'll just have to monitor the crushed stone levels, right. uh, as opposed to putting in that concrete pad. So I just wanted to speak to that. And again, I appreciate uh, the work that was quickly done. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Tessier. Item 610, Your Worship, uh, was about. Uh, there was some question about the data from our speed monitoring signs. Yes. Again, I think from you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, so our officers have actually collected some data from our speed monitoring signs yeah. in various locations around the city, and we'll be bringing forward a more comprehensive report. But I just wanted to let you know that 85% of the traffic, it seems, are adhering to the speed limits. The other 15% are not. 85% are adhering to... Uh, are adhering are, to the speed limits. Yeah, they're limit. abiding by the posted speed limits, but there's 15% that are not. And of those that are not, sometimes the speeds are getting... Uh, certainly in areas where we don't want them to be. There's no doubt about that. So we have been monitoring those areas. We've also uh, set up some unmarked cars with the radar gun this week. We're going to continue to do that and hand out appropriate tickets as necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good to know. Yeah. I, I want uh, the 15% that are not. Mm -hmm. Do we have any figures? Does the data show us how... Uh, aggressive yes. they are and yes. what are we seeing yes uh, it we, you depends. Know, is, is, is 15 is you know of that 15 percent is 12 percent of it like five kilometers over the speed limit I don't have a breakdown of the percentage percent of it 25 kilometers over the speed limit I don't have a breakdown of the percentage but I can tell you uh, for example on Michener <laughs> Avenue today <coughs> I think the speed limit is 40 kilometers an hour on Michener is that yes, that's correct yes. yeah um, and I think that there were some cars that reached in excess of, I'm going to say, if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, over 60, over mm -hmm. 60 kilometers an hour. Yeah, which would be in that 15 percent. Yes, they would, they, oh, they would definitely be in that 15 yeah. percent, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so over over 60 kilometers an hour on Michigan Avenue, is, it's, yeah, just too it's just too fast. Too fast. Yeah. It's too South fast. It's too fast. Yeah, so anyway, I mean, we're going to have, again, a more comprehensive breakdown uh, that we're going to be providing the council, but I did want to respond. Oh, look, there's one actually that was recorded at 69 kilometers an hour today on Michener Avenue. So, again, that's, you know, that's, that's much too fast uh, for a residential area. The speed limits that are posted are there for a reason. Uh, they've, been, they've been designated at those speeds for a reason. 69, 69 kilometers an hour is just too fast. And of course, so we're gonna, we're gonna take some measures, but I did want to address the deputy mayor's concerns to let him know that we do have the data. We are continuing to be aggressive with the people that are aggressively speeding in our, uh, in our neighborhoods. So I just wanted to well, address that. that. that I'm, I'm rather impressed that 85% of our drivers, based on the limited data that you have, yep. are actually adhering to speed limits. Yep. That's, that's well, what they consider that's that's better than speeds. I anticipated it would be, quite but frankly. It's, it's, yeah. it's actually what's considered to be acceptable speeds. Like they would not get pulled over for a speeding no, ticket exactly. if they're going four over, five over, exactly. seven. They would be in that 85. Yes, okay. absolutely. All right. Thank you for that. Any other business arising? 
Uh, okay, hearing uh, no other, no other business arising. Okay, Council, we have uh, three presentations that we're going to be uh, signing into the record today, as is our tradition and usual uh, process. I'm going to uh, read the proclamation, then affix a signature, and invite uh, those proclaimers or proclaimees, I'm not sure how one would term it, uh, the people who are responsible for the activities that are, uh, we are going to promote and support. <coughs> I'm going to invite them to come uh, up here and take this little microphone and, and talk a little bit about uh, some of the work they're doing. Like I say, we have three. Uh, the first is a proclamation uh, regarding National Family Week. And I'm going to take them in the order that uh, they appear here on the agenda. Uh, Catherine Fagan, who is with the Catholic Women's League at Mary Queen of the World. Catherine, I'm going to get you to come up here with me. And I'm going to uh, read this. In, you come on straight up the middle is the best. I'm going to read this into the record. And then I'm going to invite you to address council and talk a little bit about uh, the work that you're engaged in on National Family Week. The proclamation council reads as follows. Whereas the family is the single most important factor in maintaining social and economic stability in our society, and whereas Mount Pearl is proud of its strong family traditions and of its commitment to their continued strength, and whereas the family provides the foundation for a positive future for parents, children, and community, and whereas society and all social institutions have a direct or indirect impact on the unity, well-being, health, and stability of the family, and whereas all families face challenges and deserve support, and whereas through the resources and efforts of its agencies and organizations, the community can provide a family-friendly environment. And whereas the foundation of the family is strengthened when family members share time together. And whereas we are pleased to proclaim our support for families. Now, therefore, I, Randy Sims, Mayor of the City of Mount Pearl, do hereby proclaim October 6th through to the 12th, 2014, as National Family Week in Mount Pearl. And I commit this observance to the people of Mount Pearl and really to the people of Newfoundland and Labrador. And with that, Catherine, I will affix a signature, and I'm going to invite you to take this little machine here and tell us about National Family Week and your plans October 6th to 12th. Good afternoon. Families and finances, it just adds up. Thousands of Canadians have celebrated National Family Week every fall since 1985, when it was proclaimed an official week by the Government of Canada. The Canadian Association of Family Resource Programs coordinates the annual event to recognize the diversity of families and the important role family play in society. This fall, the National Family Week team is families and finances. It just adds up. Finance illiteracy is not just about money. It is an essential life skill. For families, it's an opportunity to learn together about setting goals, planning ahead, and making choices about needs versus wants. Financial literacy empowers families to make the best choices, decisions for their financial well-being. This year also marks the 20th anniversary of the International Year of the Family, which was declared in 1985. First declared in 1994, I'm sorry. National Family Week 2014 is an ideal opportunity to acknowledge the tremendous work being done around the world with respect to the role of families in development, recent trend in family policy development, good practices in family policy making, challenges faced by families worldwide, and recommended solutions. During the week of, of October the 6th to the 12th, please join the Canadian Association of National Family Resource Programs together with National Family with Partners as we reflect on the valuable contributions that family make to all of us in society. And what we're planning to do, like as the Catholic Women's League of America in the World Parish, this presentation I've just read, and a few more, we're, we're, no going, we're, going, to, uh, we're going to give this out to all the families who come to church on the weekend of October 12th. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine, very much. And uh, we appreciate uh, the work uh, both of the Catholic Women's League and of the National uh, family resource programs. This is a good idea, uh, promoting National Family Week and focusing on finances. Uh, given the world we live in today, focusing on finances is probably pretty good. I wish I'd focused on mine a little better 20 years ago, but uh, that's true for all of us. Thank you for this. I have a question. Your uh, and uh, we are going to uh, go to Deputy Mayor. Yes, we're going to actually get a picture yep. taken uh, uh, of this now. Catherine, I was just wondering, is there any plans to sort of get this out into the into the high schools in particular? I do know, like, the curriculum 
the Canadian Economy course, and they look at, at literacy, or sorry, at uh, financial literacy. And, of course, there's uh, emphasis on the family unit and stuff like that. So in addition to giving it to your parishioners, maybe we could get it into some of the high schools and we could incorporate it into, uh, into the curriculum. Okay, well, you know, like, uh, when we had the uh, denominational schools, you know, we did do things within the school system. And I don't know, like, where it's public schools now if, you know, if you could really do something in that and to that, that extent. But I don't know. Okay. okay. Thank you, Catherine, very much. Now, Jason, not the other Jason. We have two Jasons. All right, we're going to do this, you and I. Come out front. Yeah, you want the other ladies to come up as well and join us for this picture? Yeah, that's what we're doing. Okay, thank you for that, ladies, and good luck with the week. The second proclamation, the uh, second proclamation that we have today is for uh, a familiar one for us as well, Fire Prevention Week, uh, and we have Captain Mike Marr down here with us and Superintendent Robert Fowler. Uh, they're, uh, they're both here, so Superintendent and Captain, I'm going to get you guys to come up, and we're going to repeat this procedure a little bit here now. And I'm going to read the proclamation into the record and invite, uh, I believe it's Superintendent Fowler is going to say a few words to us about Fire Prevention Week. The proclamation this year reads as follows. Whereas the city of Mount Pearl is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living and visiting our city, and whereas fire is a serious public safety concern both locally and nationally, and homes are where people are at greatest risk of fire, and whereas cooking equipment is the leading cause of home structure fires and associated injuries, as a third leading cause of home fire deaths, and whereas heating and electrical equipment and smoking materials are among the leading causes of reported home fires, and whereas working smoke alarms cut the risk of dying in reported home fires in half, and whereas the City of Mount Pearl first responders are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire deaths and injuries through prevention and protection education, and whereas Mount Pearl residents are responsible or responsive to public education measures and are able to take personal steps to increase their safety from fire, especially in their homes. And whereas residents who have planned and practiced a home fire escape plan are more prepared and will therefore be more likely to survive a fire. And whereas the Fire Prevention Week 2014 theme is Working Smoke Alarms Save Lives, Test Yours Every Month, effectively serves to remind us to stay alert and use caution when cooking to reduce the risk of kitchen fires. Therefore, I, Randy Sims, Mayor of Mount Pearl, do hereby proclaim the week of October 5th to 11th as Fire Prevention Week. I urge all of the people of Mount Pearl to heed the important safety messages of Fire Prevention Week and to support the many public safety activities and efforts of the St. John's Regional Fire Department's Fire and Emergency Services. And I call upon the people of the City of Mount Pearl to participate in fire prevention activities at home, work, and school, and to take the steps needed to make their homes and families safe from the leading causes of home fires, which include cooking, heating, and electrical. In witness thereof, I do hereby, on behalf of the City of Mount Pearl and the citizens, affix my signature at our City Hall on this date, September uh, 2014. And with that, I shall affix the signature, and I'm going to invite Captain Fowler to tell us about your plans for this year's Fire Prevention Week. Today, I should say Superintendent. Sorry. Not Captain. Captain, Captain. I got Captain Marr and Superintendent Fowler. I'll get all of this right eventually. I'm an elected spokesman. <laughs> uh, good day, Councillors, Deputy Mayor, and Your Worship. Again, we sincerely appreciate the opportunity to be here again this year. Uh, this year's theme, as uh, Your Worship indicated in the proclamation, uh, working smoke alarms save lives, test yours every month. Uh, we cannot stress the importance of having these early warning devices properly installed and maintained in the home. They have been proven to provide ample amount of time for the occupants in the home to have enough
enough time to get out of the building should an emergency occur. We have a number of initiatives on the go this week, as we do every year. Uh, from the week of October the 5th until the 11th, we will have our safety booth uh, located at the Avalon Mall. There is a significant amount of safety li literature there available for the general public. On the 4th of October, we have our annual fire prevention parade. Uh, during the week, we'll be doing a number of fire drills within the schools in our jurisdiction. Uh, we'll be conducting uh, drills and talking to the kids. Uh, the 11th of October, we will have Fire Recognition Day. The general public are more than welcome to uh, visit the new station. We'll be up at the new West End Station on Black Marsh Road this year. Uh, members of the public and the children, they'll be more than welcome to come in, view the different types of equipment our uh, personnel use. Uh, we'll have soup on the premises, hot dogs, prizes for the kids, so they're more than welcome. So again, we really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Well, thank you very much, uh, Superintendent and Captain Marr. We appreciate it. Every year we've been uh, proud supporters of the uh, Fire Department's initiatives on Fire Prevention Week. We do believe that these kinds of public awareness campaigns and activities within the community that the Fire Department so willingly and, and uh, engages in, uh, I believe, over the years, has saved many a life. Uh, and that continues on. And we, uh, we want to offer our congratulations and, of course, our continued support. If there's anything Thank the city can much. do to help you with all of these activities in the week to come, uh, you know how to reach us. That's about all I can offer to do. So with that, I'm going to invite council to comment. I was going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering why you're admitting to being of that age. You know what I mean? <laughs> We're going to get you to come up front here, gentlemen, and we'll do this again. Council Councilor Tessier, if you would. Yeah, I just want to commend uh, the St. John's Regional Fire Department and certainly all firefighters across the province because this has been an unusual summer, it seems, for house fires. It seems like fire departments across the province have been extremely busy. Uh, and I'm not quite sure why. I don't know if it's just because I'm getting older and I'm more in tune to it uh, or what it is, but it just seems like there's been more. So I wanted to thank you for efforts like this and also for what you do every single day when those bells go off because you're responding. We're just reading about it. You guys are the ones answering the call. Absolutely. All right. Let's do this up front. Okay. Okay. Uh, the third proclamation uh, is, again, one I would say that uh, we are very familiar with. Uh, down here we have Egg Walters with the Community Food Sharing Association, and Sherry Evans with Metrobus uh, is down here, uh, and Kelly Reed with the VOCM Cares Foundation. I'm going to invite all of you people to come up here as we do this uh, same thing again. The routine is pretty straightforward, isn't it? And we're going to get you to come up here with me, and I'm going to uh, read the proclamation into the record. I'm, I'm actually quite curious about this one. Kelly, how many years for the food drive? This is our 25th year. It's the 25th yes. annual food drive, so that's 25 years in a row. I think I was around uh, for the first one, not for the proclamation, but for the, helping to write it. Uh, the proclamation reads as follows, Council, whereas... Hunger is recognized as a major problem in our society, and whereas food banks are under ever-increasing pressure to meet the need for healthy food for the less fortunate, and whereas the St. John's Transportation Commission through Metrobus and the VOCM Cares Foundation have joined forces to help food banks meet this need, now therefore I, Mayor Randy Sims, declare the week of October 5th to the 11th as Metrobus VOCM Cares Thanksgiving Food Drive Week in the city of Mount Pearl, and on behalf of Council, would urge all of our citizens to give generously to this uh, worthy cause. And with that, I will affix a signature, and I believe Mr. Walters is going to do the talking, ladies. Is that what's happening today? Sir, tell us about your plans, Egg, for the week. Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the city.
City of Mount Pearl and, and their staff for doing such a wonderful job for us. Uh, You're good. I'm okay now? Thank you. Uh, first of all, close. I'd like to thank the City of Mount Pearl and their staff for forgiveness of our, our taxes every year. <laughs> <laughs> really appreciate that. Uh, and, uh, you know, your, your staff, by having food drives here, citizens of Mount Pearl doing, doing their bit. Um, it, it's great. Uh, like I say, it's, it's 25 years. 22 years ago, my first food drive with the VOCA Metrobus food drive, we went away with what we could put in the back of a pickup. And last year, we had, I think, three, three full buses completely full. So it, it's great what, what your citizens and, uh, do to help the less fortunate. Uh, it will be at the uh, selected Sobe stores, I guess, as well as well as on Metrobus. And I'd like for uh, Kelly to probably elaborate on that a little bit. Thank you. So uh, during the week. Come up, at this, up here, Kelly. We got to get this camera, see? We got to get this okay, camera sorry. in here. Go ahead. Uh, during the week of uh, October 5th to the 11th, Metrobus, uh, people traveling on the Metrobus can donate. Um, there is a band there. We, uh, bands are going into our Sobe stores on October the 3rd. So anyone visiting Sobe's uh, in your area, please donate. And also we have a number of schools that participate every year and uh, we receive a, a great amount from them. So if you have a child traveling, uh, going to school, please donate. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, guys. Uh, the 25th anniversary, this is the 25th year. I'd like it to be your biggest year ever, quite frankly. That would be wonderful. Uh, I know that Mount Pearlers uh, have uh, jumped on this in years gone by and have been tremendous supporters, uh, particularly when we put it in the grocery stores, collect a lot uh, that way, uh, and certainly uh, Metro bus riders, uh, a lot of people bring, bring like a food item every day for the week uh, on the bus, and it all adds, adds up to a tremendous boost for the Community Food Sharing Association and our local food banks. And uh, you're all to be congratulated for joining forces in this way. It's good to see the corporate community, the nonprofit community, actually helping, uh, you know, the more vulnerable in our, uh, in our society. Uh, with that, we're going to do the same thing. We're going out front here and get our snap, our likeness taken. I was going uh, to... Councillor Stoyles, go right ahead. I just want to mention, uh, uh, with more and more people using the food banks, with the high cost of rent now, more and more people who are renting apartments net, and especially people who are on social assistance and on certain, uh, you know, what's the word... Uh, Fixed, fixed income, seniors, and, and that who can't afford, you know, rents are so high here in this region, here in, in the province. People are paying seven and eight and you know, thousand dollars a month for just a rent, and they can't afford to pay their rent and eat as well. So I'm certainly encouraging more and more people uh, to give to the food bank because the need is greater now than ever was before. Yeah, it's true. The more prosperous the area, more people fall below that threshold, don't they? Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. Can I make a comment? Indeed, you can. Uh, Egg, uh, Mr. Walters, before you go, Egg. Uh, we, we said that uh, people who are riding the bus can make donations, but you don't need to be a Metro bus drive rider to actually bring a donation to the bus. Like if, if you're near a bus stop, you can actually just bring your donation and give it to the driver. Is that correct? Yes. Perfect. And uh, Mr. Walters and I were just talking before the meeting, and apparently the demand, especially in rural Newfoundland, is very, very great. Uh, so uh, again, if we can, we can appeal to everybody's generosity mm -hmm. around the province uh, to give as generously as they possibly can. That would be great. Thank you uh, very much. Thank you again, Mr. Walters. That's great. Uh, Council, we will move on with the agenda. We have a couple of pieces of correspondence that we are tabling today uh, for Council's information. Uh, the first is a uh, letter from uh, the uh, Minister of Municipal 
and Intergovernmental Affairs, the Honorable Dan Crummel. Uh, he is writing to uh, advise us that they have reviewed our request from August 27th uh, that they would consider an amendment to the St. John's Urban Region Regional Plan to accommodate development above the 190 meter contour in the vicinity of Kenmount Hill. This is an area inside our jurisdiction and in our zoning and planning area that we very much want to now see development on, that some development above the 90, uh, 190 contour is being allowed. Uh, I, I was uh, uh, delighted to read, uh, to quote the minister, that the city's request is warranted and subject to the required public consultation. Uh, he is prepared to proceed with an amendment to the urban region regional plan to accommodate the city's vision of development in that area. So I think this is a very positive letter. Uh, and uh, obviously, uh, moving forward from here, those public consultations as well as detailed plans for the area. And uh, no doubt, I, I would think, Mr. Yevchak, at some point, um, we will have to get closer to what I would, I would call, uh, in layman's terms, a you know, comprehensive development kind of scheme for the area of uh, what we want to see above the 190 contour. But it's exciting to see uh, this land now uh, being considered more ripe for development than it has been in the last, uh, you know, well, through our recorded history, really. So uh, that's a positive development. Any comments from anybody on it at all at this point in time? Okay, I think it's good news. The, the uh, second letter uh, that we have is also from the minister, uh, and this letter is uh, in reference to the NEAR plan. The NEAR plan, it's NEAR, N-E-A-R, of course, just for the benefit of anybody uh, listening or tuning in to this today. The NEAR plan stands for the Northeast Avalon Region Plan. It will be the new plan that replaces the St. John's Urban Region Regional Plan which is a plan from 1976 that is woefully outdated. Uh, and uh, the growth in the region alone and in all of the various municipalities here require a more, I, I want to call it modern or comprehensive approach to all land use planning and development within the region. It's going to cover everything from water need and supply to regional transportation networks and so on. Uh, that plan is now moving forward. A number of amendments are being talked about and that's what's really detailed here. Uh, including a draft amendment for each of the 15 municipalities uh, in the zone who already have their own municipal plans that will now be incorporated into this new regional plan so that there is no conflict as they move forward to develop what there will be no land use conflicts between municipalities as they move forward. The last meeting on the plan was held here last Thursday in Mount Pearl. Uh, the city had the honor of hosting all of the mayors uh, and uh, uh, from the region as well as the minister who serves as the chair of this committee. So we are making progress on this plan this time around. I don't know if anybody has a comment or a thought on it. It's really basically tabled uh, for information today. Uh, and we have to review this interim amendment to the St. John's Urban Region Regional Plan. Any comments we have have to be supplied by October the 10th at 12 noon. I look at uh, our city planner over there, and Mr. Yevchek just nodded his head, indicating that will be done. Another, so another deadline, another deadline uh, to be met. So thank you, Council. With that, we will move on to committee reports. Then the first uh, report being community services. Uh, Deputy Mayor Locke, the floor is yours. Thank you, Your Worship. A little lonely here now. All of our guests have left. So. They've all left us again. It's hey? cavernous now. I mean, my voice is bouncing back at me, so... We're back to being our boring selves There you again. go. Uh, two quick items, Your Worship. The first uh, has to do with the Oktoberfest craft fair. Uh, I mean, it's unbelievable that October is just around the corner. Of course, today was the first day of, of autumn, and it was a beautiful day out there. Uh, this is just uh, some notification, information purposes for the public, that the Oktoberfest craft fair, the annual event that's hosted by our city's uh, community services department, is taking place on Thanksgiving Day Monday, which is October the 13th from 10 in the morning till 4 in the afternoon at the Reed Community Center. A great opportunity now for residents and visitors to come in and get some uh, great gift ideas and uh, decor ide ideas for fall and winter. Admission is only $2, and children under the age of 12 are admitted free of charge. Uh, in addition to the beautiful gifts and uh, decor ideas, there will be a, a sausage luncheon in our refreshment garden, and that's going to be hosted by the Mount Pearl Girl Guides and there will also be a children's craft area being held in the Kitty's Corner. So if residents would like further information, they can certainly contact our Community Services Department, uh, Ms. Krista Tucker at 7481008. And the next item, Your Worship, uh, has to do with the electronic sign tender 
uh, for the digital sign or the, uh, the big sign that we're going to put up at the Summit Center. The tender was closed and all tenders were reviewed. The committee is recommending that we award the electronic sign tender for the Mount Pearl Summit to the lowest qualified bidder, E.C. Boone Limited, uh, with a total cost of $104,725.57, and that, Your Worship, includes HST and ISO move. Uh, it is uh, moved and uh, seconded. Who is the seconder on this one today? Councillor Stoyles, Stoyles can't second today. She's uh, abstaining. Uh, so it's, it's uh, Councillor Raker, Raker, as alternate, will second the motion. Uh, question or comment? Yeah, just a question, uh, Your Worship. Councillor Raker? Yeah, for the benefit of the, uh, the public deputy mayor, I guess this is a very... Uh, elaborate sign. It's not only meant to just post basically uh, individual messages that are fixed. It's able to basically post uh, changing messages at any point in time, I guess, to advise the public what's going on here uh, at the new Summit Center. Uh, it's money I think well spent when it's all said and done. And it's one way of, I guess, replacing, remember the old Reed Center sign that was out there on the corner, which I understand the that sign is being reused down at the uh, Team Gushu complex, right? But well, I think this be. sign here yet, will, right? no. it will be down the road, right? But this sign adds a lot of value, I think, to the messaging that we need for the new Summit Center. Thank you. Absolutely, Your Worship. And just as C Councillor Aker mentioned, that uh, we weren't able to put it on the corner of the parking lot where the former sign was because you'll notice that the parking lot was extended to accommodate the, uh, the new structure up there. Uh, so the right-of-way and the, the grass area, we just didn't have the, the space to do that. So this new sign, as Councillor Aker said, will be state-of-the-art, and it will have uh, notifications about events going on in the Summit Center and the Reed Center and the Glaciers, and it will be posted on the on the side of uh, of the building up there. So, and that's uh, that's it for me, Your Worship. Thank you very much. We'll call the question on that then, unless somebody has a comment. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded. Motion is carried. Uh, and uh, let the record uh, show that Councillor Stoyles uh, will not be voting uh, on that particular item. Uh, Corporate Services Committee report, uh, Councillor Aker. Thank you, Your Worship, for uh, Council's uh, consideration tonight. We have one item, which is really a, a very large amount of money. Yeah. Uh, 18 <laughs> items in the invoices for approval, uh, totaling 4.936, 979, $979.39. Uh, $979 uh, out of that total, about $4.9 million, 3.3 of that is going towards the holdback release for the new, uh, the new Summit Center. Uh, basically, the 30-day period for the mechanics lien has expired. The Summit Center has been finished. I believe the warranty kicked in around the, uh, uh, the end of July, which basically coincided with uh, substantial uh, completion for that Summit Center. Um, and for the benefit of Council, uh, we still have, uh, during the warranty period, we have performance or warranty bonds, basically, with, with Marco, who are the, uh, the general contractor on it. And I believe some of the systems have further warranties, uh, probably originating with the, uh, some of the subcontractors that were on the job. So that's $3.3 million. We have also got regional services costs totaling $1 million, and we have uh, streets of approximately uh, half a million and throw in uh, basically another 10 or, 50, 10 or 12 items for $100,000, and I ask your approval for $4.9 million. Thank you. $4.9 million. Any question on any of the items listed, 1 through to 18, Deputy Just Mayor? Just a point of interest. Uh, items 17 and 18 struck, struck my uh, attention when I was reading it. Xylem Canada Limited, the supply and installation of SCADA ready Omron PLC controller. So. <laughs> Just, I'm sorry, Councillor Walsh. I, was, I wasn't sure. I must have missed that meeting. So, we know what director it is. Yeah. So, can you uh, can you fill us in on what the the SCADA ready Omron PLC controller would be? It's pipes. It's pipes. Um, director Randall. I wouldn't. Uh, it's like a test now. I wouldn't be able to give you what every initial stands for, but it's associated with components of lift stations, sewage lift stations, and it's repairs and maintenance to the lift stations in the city. I'll have to come back to you with all the initials yeah. at the next meeting if you wish me to. <laughs> there was a there was a, an invoice for Farrell's not here that was supposed to be here, but it's not here for approval. Okay, thank you because I got a call about that again. Okay, uh, all those in favor, contrary minded, motion is carried. Infrastructure, public works, Councillor Walsh. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, three of the first four items deal with street upgrading. Some of them are going back a few years. We're trying to clear up some of the CB contracts that we had uh, that we didn't get to in 2011, 2012, believe it or not. 
And that was at a time when we were actually going through a lot of staff changes in engineering. In fact, our director was hired, I think, in 2012. We had uh, Tino O'Day, Daryl Drover. These are all hired within this time frame. So we were going through a lot of upheaval, and a couple of streets still needed to be attended to. So the first contract is CP3. It includes, just for the information of council and the public, if I can get this to open here, I think it's Second Street. Uh, sorry. Second Street and... Uh, and Windsor Place, actually. Um, okay. So that contract uh, closed on September 2nd. We had five bids, which was a pretty good response. Uh, the amount, uh, the lowest qualified bidder was Weirs, and we're, uh, we're recommending that the contract be awarded to Weirs for $1,692,898.20, HSD included, and I so move. Moved by Councillor Walsh, seconded by Deputy Mayor Locke. Question <clears> or comment? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded, that motion is carried. Okay, the second, uh, uh, I'm going to go to number three, if you could, uh, Your Worship. This is, a CP, uh, this is a CP contract as well, CP4. It includes Third Street and Wilcox Place. Uh, it closed, the bid closed on August 26, 2014. We had two bids, um, and we're recommending that the contract be awarded to the lowest qualified bidder, which is Modern Paving. For two million three hundred forty-four thousand two hundred eighty-nine dollars and fifty-three cents, uh, HST included. And I so move. Moved, seconded. seconded by Deputy Mayor Locke. Question or comment? All those in favor? Aye. Contrary Aye. minded. Motion carried. Your Worship, I'm pleased to be able to say that we uh, applied to the Building Canada Fund to Communities Component Project for street improvements on Princeton Crescent and Pumphrey, and we were awarded the contract uh, to a total of one. Uh, million three hundred thirty-eight thousand fifty-three dollars. Uh, that is one point four million less uh, the GST. This is pretty much evenly divided among the federal government, provincial, and municipal uh, governments. The breakdown is there: four hundred forty-six thousand, approximately, for the federal government, four hundred ninety point six for the province, and four hundred one point four thousand uh, for the uh, municipality of Mount Pearl. And we were delighted to receive that. We thank. Uh, Building Canada Fund Communities Project for that funding, and uh, I'm, I'm going to ask a motion of council. I have that approved as well today. It is moved, seconded. seconded. All in favor? Aye. Contrary Aye. minded. Motion carried. The last of the tenders, Your Worship, was for traffic control services, which closed on the 29th of August, 2014. We had two bids, and we're uh, we're recommending that the FYB Holdings Limited bid for the amount of $100,315.75. Uh, including HSD be awarded, and I so move. Move, seconded. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded, carry. Just a couple of uh, updates on activities. The Summit Center, of course, uh, we're all pretty excited about, and it's an ongoing project. Uh, we're, we're very, very close, from an engineering perspective at least, of having this uh, completed. I can tell you, of course, uh, as uh, Director Collins knows as well, we do have some community services uh, people up there getting some orientation with equipment, et cetera, although they're not operating the facility per se as of yet. Uh, the occupancy permit items are ongoing. The pool cleaning and balancing is ongoing. That's probably one of the biggest issues that we're dealing with is the chemical balance and the cleaning of the pool, uh, the pH levels and all the other water levels that have to be there, the amount of chlorine, et cetera. We're dealing with that, and, of course, the, the biggest uh, impediment to that, of course, has been the dust and some of the other, um, I guess, some of the other air quality items that are affecting the quality of water in the pool. But we're very, very close to having that cleared up, and uh, hopefully, within a few days, having the pool operational, uh, at least for our staff to come in and, and work there. We have other minor, minor work outstanding, and deficiencies are being corrected. There are probably dozens if not a hundred or more small deficiencies, but they are not things that would hold up the uh, opening of the pool at all. They're things that we'll probably be working on throughout the course of the fall when the facility is opened. Very quickly, Your Worship, in terms of the summer uh, report, the, we've had our, our first bulk garbage collection, uh, and the amount in terms of volume was very comparable to last year. Our, our contract work for Mill and Phil is ongoing. There are nine curb cut downs. These are people who who are requesting low back uh, cuts uh, on their property. And we have nine left to complete there um, on our, on our uh, current list. All lawns that were damaged by last year's winter snow clearing operations have been repaired, but we do have some repairs to entrances to green space and some other digs that our, our water and sewer crews have been doing throughout the summer and early fall. Uh, right now, in terms of signage, we're updating the blue zones and the neighborhood watch signage. 
Uh, that's a bit of an ongoing project as well, as sign generally, sign maintenance generally is an ongoing project. Um, in terms of parks, uh, we continue to obviously maintenance on our fields, our baseball fields, our soccer fields, et cetera. Uh, we're resurfacing, resurfacing sorry, some outdoor courts, Park Avenue basketball court. That has been completed, as well as the Trevelger Drive courts have been completed. And we're just waiting for some dividing fence uh, to be installed within the next week in the Trevelger uh, Park area. Uh, Glen Denning and Chaplin Crescent Park playground structures have been installed. The equipment is in and, and the uh, installations are complete. In terms of our water and sewer, water main flushing is ongoing. We're, clean, we're continuing to use the vac truck to clean up uh, where necessary. Valve exercising is ongoing, and of course, uh, our water and sewer crews are continuing to, to carry out digs, and the uh, paving crew has to repair um, whatever digs that are done, and that's on the list for continuous completion uh, throughout the fall, as, as late as, as the asphalt plants will allow us to operate. That's it for Infrastructure Public Works, Your Worship. Thank you very much. Coming, Your Worship. Thank you, sir, very much. Councillor Aker. I've got to tell you, Councillor Walsh, that I'm getting some very, very good feedback on the playgrounds. We love the feedback. Yeah. They are, yeah, it's very positive. They're, I won't say the word state of the art, but they're very well put together. They're made sure. to last. They're an investment in our community, and our kids are, you know, have, having a bit of fun. And they're very safe compared to some of the old uh, playground material out there. I know we managed to work through about, what, two or three a year, depending on the level of the budget. But I think we've had this program on the go for a number of years uh, left. Maybe not for today, but maybe next meeting we can an update as to how many playground areas uh, are left. But uh, these playgrounds are installed by our, our city staff. Mm -hmm. And some people ask me, well, why are you installing them now in September? Yes. And, you know, I... I good question, Councillor. That's a good question. It's, it's a good question. Thank you. But, uh, you know, part of it is that our park staff are very, very busy in the spring with other priorities. And the fact that we're opening playgrounds now means they've been working on it for half the summer, right? So, I mean, but this throw out, of, if the committee would pass it on to staff, what a great job they're doing. And hopefully we'll be able to fund more in the uh, budgets to come. Thank you. Sure, it would be nice to get them installed in May. Just saying. As opposed to, as opposed to the last of September. You know, we're always complaining about the government, right, and how slow they are to get things. Anyway. Thank you so much for good feedback. Well, I saw two of these uh, updated facilities, and they are looking good. Uh, the redevelopment of the basketball court down on the Inner Park Avenue looks pretty sharp. There's paint to go on that yet, though, isn't there? Right? Yeah, like lines, and yeah, it's, it's not finished, right? No, it's resurfaced in that, but it looks like it, to me that the lines aren't done yet, but maybe they are. It looks sharp anyway. All right, we're up to uh, we're up to planning and development committee report, Councillor Ledwell. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, the first item, I'm certainly happy to report that we received the signed subdivision development agreement for the Moffat Road subdivision. This is phase three of this uh, particular subdivision. Uh, the application has been received from Prospect Development Limited and Marley Construction Limited, as you'll see there. They're proposing to construct 44 single-family detached dwellings, and these are going to be constructed on Moffat Road. Wilkes Avenue and Selkirk Drive. You'll see that the 44 is comprised of 19 units that are owned by, going to be owned by Prospect, uh, and they're going to be single family dwellings without subsidiary apartments. Secondly, uh, the other part of this is that there'll be 25 lots that are owned by Marley. Uh, they're going to be single family dwellings that are going to have, the, well, with or without subsidiary apartments. So it could be either or in that case. Mm -hmm. Uh, the department certainly has reviewed the signed agreement. They're recommending that it be signed and executed. Uh, we did discuss it as a committee. Uh, now, we, we certainly concur with the recommendation of the department, but we also wanted to sort of reiterate council's commitment uh, to the residents up in the Moffat Road subdivision that all of the work on phase one, two, and three be completed or before council, requiring, move, uh, council considering uh, moving forward on phase four of this development. So it is recommended that the approval be granted for the mayor and the chief administrative officer to sign the Moffat Road subdivision development agreement for phase three on behalf of the city council of Mount Pearl, and I so move. Uh, it is moved and uh, seconded by Councillor Walsh. Question or comment? All those in favor, okay. the contrary-minded motion is carried. Moving right along, Your Worship, our second item this evening uh, comes from our communications division. Of course, it pertains to uh, the city's citizen alert program. Of course, the 
program is going great guns. We've got lots of uh, people signing up. We've had a couple of messages already go out. Um, but of course, we want more people to sign up. And uh, you know, as the tagline says, if we can't reach you, we can't alert you. So therefore, we're proposing to undertake a radio uh, advertisement program. You'll see there that the cost of the program will be $3,556 plus HST. We're proposing to uh, advertise on all the local radio stations. And uh, it is recommended that Council ratify uh, the decision to proceed with this radio advertising program, and I so move. Uh, moved by Councillor Ledwell, seconded by Councillor Walsh. Question or comment? All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded, motion is carried. And as an FYI, do you know how many citizens have signed up? I don't know. I don't have a, an exact number. I think it's about 1,000, isn't it? About 1,000, you say, John? 3,000? Councillor, anybody know how many have signed up? I do. That's why I'm wondering. <laughs> You guess how many peanuts in the jar? Thirteen forty. Close to the retail price for going over. Twenty wrong, guys. All right, <laughs> I'm having a bit of fun. Uh, it's a little over seventeen hundred and forty. I think it was seventeen hundred and thirty-seven or something like that. Connie told me today. I was the only one who didn't go over. Uh, the yeah, price is so, right here. So, so you know, it, uh, <laughs> the communications, the communications people uh, and planning, they tell me that that response up to now is really good. You know, that's about 20%, really, when you think about it, of the people that we, we, you know, if you represent this one, this contact is in reality not a person but a home most of the time, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty good. And I got a feeling the first major winter storm, you're going to see a whole lot of people sign Another up. 1,700. Uh, yeah, but it was, uh, it's, uh, it's a good start on it. And I know we used the system the other night, the alert system to advise about the high winds and the bulk garbage, don't put out like objects and things like that. So. It's it's gone. It's good. Absolutely. Everybody, everybody that we have in our system will still get a call, like the 9,000 plus people that we called when we did our test case. Those people will still be called. What we're asking people for is to want yeah, to use yeah, the it's, cell it's, or yes, put down the yes, Twitter. It's, it's not a matter they, of... If, if they want you, additional information... Yeah, no, then, but once you register, if you say, well, uh, send it to my cell. Instead of my house. We, we won't send it to your house. We'll send it to your cell. If we'll they want that text, option. Email. Exactly. But this, the, yeah, you can also choose all. You can choose, you you can can choose, choose them all. all. Yeah. But the, the thing is, a lot of people are going to get it. Even if they don't sign up, they're still going to get the alerts anyway. That's the main thing you need to let people know. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Councillor Ledwell. Thank you, Your Worship. Our third item this evening is our development permit list for the period of September 8th to the 19th, 2014. Uh, we do have two permits that we want to put through this evening. You'll see they are, in fact, the two uh, developments that we discussed at our last public meeting, those being the condominium apartment building at 166 Park Avenue and the building extension at 8 Kyle Avenue. I'd like to put forward a motion to approve those permits. Moved. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded. Motion carried. Moving right along, Your Worship, we have our uh, building construction totals on the residential side for the same period, September 8th to the 19th, 2014. You see there as the summer season uh, sort of wraps up, uh, we have had another busy period on the residential side. Uh, folks doing some work on their homes. Uh, there is a total there of $1,086,800 and I so move. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded. Motion carried. And your Worship, uh, on the commercial side of things, we have a total there of 577573 and I so move. Moved. Seconded. All in favor? Contrary minded. Motion is carried. And before wrapping up uh, planning, uh, Your Worship, yeah, I do have a notice of motion to read into the uh, record. If you would. In accordance with Section 39 of the City of Mount Pearl Act, 1988, take notice that in accordance <coughs> with Council's public, no public notification policy, I will, at a regular meeting of Council, move an amendment to the Mount Pearl Development Regulations 2010 that, if enacted, will amend the text of the Mount Pearl Development Regulations as follows. In Section 3, under Subsection 3.3, Uses Zones, Special Zones, add the following to the list of zones and abbreviations immediately after the Conservation Use Zone. That would be in Comprehensive Development Area, Ken Mount Hill, CDA for Ken Mount Hill. Also, in Section 11, under Special Zones, add immediately after the Conservation Use Zone the following new use zone with permitted uses and conditions, 11.28. Comprehensive Development Area, Ken Mount Hill, again, CDA, Ken Mount Hill. Secondly, amend the land use zoning map as follows, 
rezone land on Ken Mount Hill from rural to comprehensive development area, Ken Mount Hill, CDA, Ken Mount Road. The purpose of this amendment is to rezone those lands in the Ken Mount Hill area of Mount Pearl, currently zoned as rural and located above the 190 meter contour to comprehensive development area Ken Mount Hill to signal council's intention to encourage the development of these lands for a range of urban purposes subject to the approval of further detailed rezoning of the lands with such rezoning to be subject to ensuring that adequate municipal services are in place to accommodate any proposed urbanization of these lands. And Thank that you, concludes sir. planning and development. That's wonderful. We are up to Regional Services and Environment Committee. Councillor Stoyles. We just have one item and uh, just to inform the public that on September 28th is World River Day, which is a global event uh, all across Canada. Uh, and uh, the Waterford Valley Rotary Club uh, is going to be having an event at Boeing Park on that day, starting at 10 o'clock and it's going to go from 10 to 2. And, of course, the City of Mount Pearl have worked very closely with the uh, Waterford Valley Rotary cleaning up our rivers and with the uh, Conservation Corps in the past number of years and uh, would like to so support this event as well. And I'm sure our staff will be out attending this event. And, again, it's on uh, September the 28th, and it's going to take place at the... the Clubhouse in Boeing Park. What time is that, Tina? It's 10 o'clock, 10 to 2, my understanding, 10 a.m. in the morning, and it's going to run from 10 to 2. And that's it for us, Your Worship. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, I think this is uh, very fitting. Uh, I don't know if anyone saw the news last evening about all the contaminants that they're finding in the drinking water up around uh, Lake Ontario and traces of pharmaceuticals and pesticides and herbicides and all that sort of stuff. And the reason I say that is because um, in, you know, part of the curriculum at the, at the high school, uh, one of our uh, classes, we were talking about the Waterford River just, just today, as a matter of fact. And uh, one of my students asked, the, you know, the purpose of the blue fish that we had painted by the, you know, by the, uh, the catch basins. And, of course, when I explained to them, they had no idea. They, they didn't understand that the rainwater actually goes down in, into, into the river. river. They, they think that the sewer is the sewer and that all water sort of heads down to the Riverhead Treatment Facility. Uh, so when I, when I described this, they, they were really surprised that the rivers are connected directly to the, uh, to the catch basin. So again, it's great to remind people that what you put on the road or you know dumping anything down that catch basin goes right out into our river. Hence, that's why we had those blue fish around. I think the older Mount Pearlers would have known what the bluefish were for, but these were the younger generation, yeah. so they, they weren't quite sure what. So I think this is a great initiative, and uh, I'm glad to see that we brought it here today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, we are up to Transportation Public Safety Committee. Councillor Tessier. Just one quick item, and it's a tongue twister. Mm -hmm. The Turkey Tea Timex 10K Road Race. Whoa. How about that, huh? Thank you very much. Uh, we're just letting the public know that this Turkey Tea Timex 10K is scheduled for Sunday, October 12th. It's an 8 a.m. start. That's one reason why I don't run. Starting off at 8 o'clock in the morning. They start way too early. My goodness. They're starting at uh, 8 a.m. at the corner of Dundee and Glencoe in Donovan's Industrial Park. It's a 90-minute run time limit, and it's going to be concluding on Park Avenue uh, at the Park Place Community Center. St. John Ambulance, the Rover Search and Rescue, and our own MEOs are going to be assisting with this event, and we want to wish everybody who's participating the very best of luck and that is just for information purposes only okay thank you very much council that concludes committee reports under new business yeah. deputy mayor uh, two quick items your worship uh, the first um, I had some residents ask about the traffic light sequencing mm -hmm. um, specifically at at the Topsail Road Commonwealth intersection and I think they said a Thomas Byrne Drive and their comment was more early in the morning as a matter of fact these uh, uh, these two gentlemen work with Metrobus. Um, so they were wondering, um, some of the lights when they're traveling in the morning, they go through the full circuit. So if there's nobody at the intersection and they come up to it, it goes through the flashing arrow, and then so they're, the, they're delayed there. So they were wondering uh, if they were traffic activated, if they needed to be reset. And they also threw out the idea, is it, is it something that we ever considered, like you know, during the overnight hours when um, traffic is less, that they have four-way flashing lights or where people would rather than have to stop and wait. I know it's not an extended period of time, but I figured I would throw that out there as, a, as an aside. But they are wondering about the, 
sequencing of the traffic lights at Commonwealth and Topsail, and I think Thomas Byrne Drive. So if we can, I'll uh, get checked into that, and I can certainly report back to those residents. And the other question I have is for uh, uh, Director Yevchek, and it has to do with a tree planting. I know the city has uh, planting requirements. Uh, had a contact uh, question from a resident up on Simcoe, and they just recently purchased a new property there, and they're getting their landscaping done. And their understanding was they had to have at least two trees on their property, but they don't want to plant maple trees. But they were informed that the city requires them to be maple trees. And I wasn't sure of the requirement for maple trees, so I said I would certainly check into it. I don't know if uh, Director Yevchek can, can speak to that, if the maple trees are a requirement, or can they choose any species, basically? Uh, Your Worship, uh, uh, certainly the requirement is for two trees per lot, but I'm not, um, I'm not fully uh, aware that we, we do require specifically maple trees. Okay. I will ask our staff to take a look. I know there is a cost limit on the type of tree that goes on the site, because of course it's a cost to the developer. Right. So the developer may, um, may be kind of restricting the, the type of trees to that cost estimate per tree. Sure. Uh, but I'm not sure if it's specifically maple trees, but I will report back to council. I appreciate members. it because these residents indicated that in their conversation with the developer they were willing to pay the additional cost if it wasn't indeed a cost factor they were willing to pay for the trees that they would would have liked but the response was that it was a requirement of the city that they had to be maple trees. It makes sense. I mean, mm. I'm just sense I hear you. Yeah. Now on the maple trees I'm wondering speaking of maple trees my wife dislikes them I won't use the stronger term she uses she calls them weeds and I was reading this summer that some jurisdictions are actually prohibiting the planting of these maple trees because they get so big and because of the increased incidence of windstorms in the context of climate change that they are actually causing damage to infrastructure, power lines, and stuff like that. So some municipalities have actually gone in and banned the planting of maple trees on the 50 by 100 foot lots. I'm a prime example. I got a tree in my backyard that the previous owners planted it has to be 35 or 40 feet high. It is absolutely massive. So if you got, you know, three or four of these planted on a property, because many people plant them because they're landscaping, so they put the trees in, not fully realizing what they're going to have in their backyard in uh, 20 to 25 years. So I don't know if that's something that our planning committee, Your Worship, ever considered about uh, tree growth. I, um, I raised it some years back, and I got criticized by a former counselor because he said, I thought you were a tree hugger, and here you want to cut all down, down all the trees. But it, my argument at the time was that we, we have a limit on the height of, of uh, garages, for example, or sheds in the backyard, you know, for sight lines, and you don't want to block out your neighbor's, you know, sun and all this sort of stuff. But yet we can plant a tree that grows to 40 feet in height that totally shadows the entire neighbor's backyard. So, and I know, Your Worship, you spoke before about, you know, the postage stamp lots, the 50 by 100 lots, and, but you spoke of it in the context of, of composting. I'm just wondering if there's anything that the planning committee might consider about. Do you want to prevent this massive growth of trees in light, of, have a look at it. In light of climate change yeah. and the potential? Because if you think of the last Hurricane Igor, a lot of these massive maple trees, they're the ones that tipped. They were top heavy. Mm -hmm. So they did a lot of damage. So I just throw that out there. Perhaps we Especially can. Especially when they're full of leaves. Absolutely. Okay. We can yeah. take it back to committee. So That's right. it for me, Your Worship. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Stoyles. Thank you, Your Worship. I just have one item, and that's the North East Avalon Joint Council will be meeting October the 15th in Bay Balls. And, of course, there's 21 communities within the Avalon that meets. There's six joint councils on the whole of the Avalon, but uh, this is the one here for this region here okay. in uh, in the North East Avalon, and they meet in different communities within, uh, the, you know, within the 21 communities, and they take turns. So next month... It's in Bay Balls. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Walsh. Uh, no, thank you, Your Worship. Councillor Tessier. Just back to the uh, the, the uh, information that I brought in about our speed about our speed monitors. Um, I just want to advise the public that if you are speeding within our city limits, I mean, we're cognizant now that there are some issues. Really, really appreciative that 85% of the population are adhering to sensible speeds. But the other 15%, you will get ticketed. If you if you are speeding excessively in our streets, you absolutely will get a ticket. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Councillor Aker? Yeah, I want to update Council, Your Worship, on uh, an event uh, that the city participated in on Sunday. It was known as uh, TD Tree Days, and it was an initiative on, uh, by the TD Bank. About 50 people showed up, mostly uh, employees of TD Bank and their families. 
Uh, but we also had some people there from the uh, Conservation Corps of Newfoundland and Labrador and a few volunteers, and as well as some people from the community. And, uh, and better still, I must tell you, the City of Mount Pearl staff, uh, Julia Schwartz, Harrison Critch, uh, Glenn Ingerman, and Jimmy Nolan did a wonderful job, I must say, in setting it all up, getting the beds ready. Uh, Glenn brought the backhoe so we could dig some trees and some, you know, some of the raw land that was up there and that. Uh, together, we all planted close to 400 trees, ranging from, there was a few maples, I must admit, <laughs> to chuckley pears, to little ashes, to, uh, to oak trees, um, and as well as shrubs and smaller trees as well, right, you know. So we had uh, excellent support from Russell's Landscaping. Sean Russell was there from CD's Trees in Logie Bay. They, they helped select some of the trees and do the planning uh, along with Sean as well as Julia in coming up with the, uh, the final product. Uh, Chris Squires is the uh, is the entrepreneur there, and um, basically it was a fun time had by all. I know some of the kids that showed up at nine o'clock on a Sunday morning, uh, they said, "How come we're here, Mom and Dad?" And then around ten thirty, they were saying, "Geez, this is the best day ever." <laughs> they had a ball. We had great weather, and ideally, Your Worship and Council, we'd like to do this event again uh, if uh, if uh, TD is is open to holding it again oh, in Mount sure. Pearl. I'm sure we can pick other locations. This was at the Mount Carson Terrace Drainage Pond. An area that does look kind of barren, you know, it's, it's been land that basically, I guess, years ago was reforested. And in keeping with the city's strategic plan, you know what I mean, for, you know, trying to be more environmentally friendly, uh, we're replacing some of the trees, not to the same extent that was there before. And at the same time, we're, we're helping uh, the water flow uh, this discharge down into the Waterford River. So that goes to making the river uh, uh, a bit healthier, as well as the residents who live along the river. So it was a real win-win, and we look forward to doing it again uh, this uh, next year. Excellent. We 50, pe sh pe 50 people showed up, and it was equivalent to the first year of the Waterford River cleanup. Mm. And if we could, you know, use this, the success this year, and of course, you know, they recognized TD did the city's partnership and all this. Mm -hmm. We can have an even bigger and better event, hopefully next year for Excellent. everybody yeah. involved. Right. Mm -hmm. And the Thank final you. thing I wanted to uh, to make note of, uh, it's tomorrow afternoon. I think it's being held at the Reed Center, the Chamber, the Mount Pearl Paradise Chamber of Commerce, uh, has their business trade show September 24th. It runs from 9 a.m. to uh, to 5 p.m. President Tammy Clark and Lisa Ivey, who's the business manager, will be there and I invite uh, hopefully all the community to come out and have a look and see what the chamber has not only to offer but what their members do as well. Thank yeah, you. Bringing greetings there at the opening of that tomorrow you? morning. Yes, yeah, that'll be good. No, nine tomorrow morning for me. Yeah, it runs all day, nine yeah. to five. Uh, Councilor Edwell, new business. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, be very brief. Uh, of course, uh, Arts Week was last week in, here in the City of Mount Pearl. Just want to throw out a very quick congratulations to Christine Hanbury and the Association for the Arts in Mount Pearl. Uh, they continue to do fantastic work, of course. Uh, you know, uh, advocating for and uh, and it, I guess. Um, showing uh, folks all of the different aspects of the arts here in the city of Mount Pearl and and elsewhere. Uh, so thanks to them for another great week and certainly look forward to next year's Arts Week and all the other projects that they do throughout the year. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, sir, very much. Uh, that being it, I guess I'll very quickly uh, let Council know that I attended a board meeting and Councillor Stoyles was with me of uh, m and this week past or this weekend in Gander. Everything is kind of getting ready for the convention was basically what we're talking about, which is going to be happening this coming October. Uh, there is a document that's being put together as we speak that Council is going to be intrigued with, uh, and it is the fiscal framework final proposal from m &L for the provincial government. Uh, so we went over the document in some detail and finalized uh, what that document is going to look like. I look forward to your responses to it when you get a chance to see it, which I'm anticipating will happen in the next uh, couple of weeks or so. Uh, on that note, with no further business, I will uh, entertain adjournment, says Councillor Tessier. We stand adjourned. Thank you, everybody.